2019 is a very exciting year for uh, 5G technology deployment. Um, I think we're starting to see the first products, uh, first commercial products uh, arriving to the market in places like Korea, US and China. Uh, we think that the mass deployment really is going to begin in the first quarter of 2020. We think that uh, China, US, Korea will continue to lead the way. Um, specifically, uh, it looks like uh, China is going to take a, a giant step forward in terms of the mass deployment um, due to various reasons. One is spectrum availability, uh, two is China decided to go with the um, sub-6 gigahertz technology for 5G, uh, which is important because it's easier to deploy to large areas. Some specialists, some experts say that it could be over 100 million units of phones sold in China next year with 5G technology. So that's obviously very exciting. And then US, of course, is in the forefront uh, with the merger of uh, T-Mobile Sprint. I think they have a new spectrum allocation. But anyway, next year, without a doubt, is going to be the year of mass deployment of 5G um, with China, US, Korea, perhaps Japan, uh, some Europe uh, is going to take the lead. And MediaTek is definitely on the forefront of it. So we're working with various uh, OEMs already um, to deploy our first product in the first quarter of next year. In terms of the deployment in uh, in LATEM, so far there are, you know, it's a little bit spotty. So we we're hearing, um, you know, Argentina is trying to deploy something specifically for their, um, you know, they're essentially replacing their Direct TV with a 5G broadcasting. So some of it has to do with the spectrum auctions. Uh, I believe Brazil is still uh, that's still something that they need to do. So spectrum is an important thing, which means governments are involved. Technology is an important thing because it means carriers have to invest. Um, so I think those things will take a little bit of time and will attempt to, to settle out. But I think in the long run, it will be a huge benefit for consumer and for the society overall. Um, I think that's very important. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about inclusiveness um, in our company, in MediaTek, making the technology available for wider audience. Um, I was in Medellin for two days and all I hear was inclusiveness, how to make the barrios accessible through public transportation, how to make it accessible through cable cars, um, and how to make it accessible through access to data, internet, etc. So I think 5G will probably drive down that way and I think the cities and, and parts of the countries and countries that see that as a priority will probably lead the way. Yeah, so enterprise is probably one of the um, easiest to comprehend areas where the 5G is going to have a strong impact. Um, and it varies from simple things that's simple to understand for us, um, such as um, so-called uh, always connected uh, PCs. So we're starting to work with some of the PC manufacturers and the motherboard manufacturers to see how to integrate 5G modem into the computers. And of course, there's a lot of stuff that kind of looks like sci-fi movies today, but will become reality very soon because of the low latency. So this could be remote operations, um, such as in the dangerous industries like mining, where you can work equipment remotely. Uh, it could be um, things like re re reprogrammable and reconfigurable factories, right, which doesn't, do not require um, to be wired. I mean, you have to understand that today, Wi-Fi technology does not deliver that kind of reliability of service that 5G promises us. 5G has this high reliability protocol that guarantees the service. And so therefore you can actually build factories, you could build hospitals, you could build uh, enterprises relying on this connectivity. And I think that's going to be a huge thing, um, you know, whether it's a robotic factories or whether it's uh, automated, uh, any kind of automation, I think that's that's a, that's a huge um, boost. And then finally, I already talked about density of uh, subscribers. Uh, we do expect the num number of connected devices to ex explode in the next 10 years, right? Um, it's going to go from just handsets today to people talk about Internet of Things. So everything connected, including, you know, refrigerators, microwaves, vacuum cleaners, you know, a, a portable robot that cleans your floor you know, washing machine, all the appliances, all the trackers, everything, right? So imagine if today you have problems making a phone call in a densely populated area, right? It's reaching the maximum. So 5G is going to resolve that problem. So I think that's also uh, a huge boost to economies, to, to uh, quality of service. We're quite
quite excited to, to have announced uh, the first 5G SOC uh, earlier this year. I specifically mention SOC because it's an all-inclusive uh, all product. It includes not just the modem, uh, but the apps processor and every, all the components that go to, to make a phone. Uh, not all, I should say, majority of the components go to something that we've done in the, in the 4G and something that so far has not been available in the 5G. Most of the products are launching in 2019 um, combine a separate chip for modem and a separate chip for the uh, for the rest of the components, right? So we're we're doing our first product, uh, all-inclusive SOC with a 5G modem, focusing on the sub six uh, gigahertz technology. Um, it's a very very uh, impressive product. It uses the latest uh, ARM A77 and the latest um, Mali G77. So I believe we will be the first ones to market with the uh, absolute latest version of the ARM processor. Um, there are a lot of firsts on this product, so we're very excited about it. We see a good response from the potential customers. Um, and we're looking to um, deploy first phones with 5G sub-6 um, in the Q1 of this year, uh, probably starting in Asia and then step-by-step step moving into European market. And we're looking at the second half of next year uh, for deployment in the US. And then probably 2021 is where we're going to start seeing the the more proliferation into the lower cost tiers uh, of the phones and perhaps proliferation into other regions such as uh, Mexico, Colombia, Brazil.